Yeah, I can see that we are live. Okay. Uh, Lily, can you hear us? I mean, yeah. How is the audio now? You can see that we are live. You can see us live. I can Lee, see can it you live. Hear us? I mean, huh? You are in the group? Yeah, I'm in the group. I can't see anything. Yeah. Just, just uh, do a refresh. I mean, okay. Just refresh and scroll down a little bit. It's just below the announcement. Okay. Uh, Lily, can you hear us? Yeah, audio is also coming, right? Ah, uh, she went again. Oh. Yeah, I can see that we are live. And scroll down a little bit. can see us Yeah, so I think uh, we are live right now, and I can see seven of. Uh, yes. Seven of one us right now so uh, let's begin so uh, to start with hello everyone uh, very good afternoon to all and uh, there are some uh, technical uh, issues happening because uh, me and Shamila ji are from Mumbai and Lily we're trying to connect with Lily who is uh, in Kolkata right now and uh, there is some internet problem happening so uh, till then we can start and uh, I don't know what to say, but uh, <laughs> Sharmali ji, if you want to start with something. Yeah, I, hi everybody. I was actually super excited about uh, interacting with Lily. As you all know, Lily has um, over 17 years of experience. Her son's turning 17 soon and she has three children. So, uh, you know, she's got amazing experience in homeschooling and I was so excited to uh, be able to interact with her. Uh, I also, uh, you know, since I also have three children and uh, I have not been there as long as Lily has been in this journey. So for me, this was a crucial learning experience because it was going to teach me a lot of things about uh, how learning takes place, how to be a parent with my children and so on. Uh, however, I guess there are internet issues. There were internet issues on my side also. Um, but now, right now, Lily is facing certain issues. She's coming in and going out and uh, she hasn't been able to hear us too. Here she comes back again. Uh, so while we are waiting for Lily, what I think is let's let's talk to Saurabh. We all know that he is the founder of this group and he's been doing a lot of work around uh, homeschooling, around alternate education. He himself is a father to a four-year-old son. Uh, lots of excitement and in the last live session we also heard a dog so it's not only a parent to a human but also to a non-human so and that's that's so wonderful because even i have um, a dog and wild cats so sort of while lily is uh, here we'll talk a little uh, let's just uh, talk to Lily first, and when she goes offline, we'll talk to you. Or oh, she's gone off again. She just went off, yeah. 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 Again, so, why don't you tell us a little about yourself as to uh, how did you get into this uh, alternate education field? You are from the filmmaking background, advertising filmmaking background, and how did you enter this alternate education field? Uh, I think I think uh, my association with children has been there for a long time because I remember after I finished my college, uh, uh, sorry, after I finished my school, 12th, uh, immediately I started, uh, you know, helping children in Bengali medium school because I am from Kolkata. And I knew that in Bengali medium school, the, uh, the subject which is like English is, is very weak. And uh, uh, the sisters and brothers of my friend, 
who were in bengali medium school and they were failing because of that single subject so mm. uh, we discussed and then we decided why not let's help them out and uh, in exchange we will also start uh, to earn something as a tuition fees uh, so it will uh, act as a like uh, pocket money for me so from there onwards and i started like uh, i used to uh, help children who used to fail in maths and in english in bengali medium school this was mm -hmm. like 2007 8 Okay. and uh, naturally uh, my interest uh, grew into photography film making uh, then i shifted to mumbai and uh, then when my son came into this world naturally there is uh, there was a discussion with my wife you know, uh, about his education about his future and then when i reflected back in my life uh, i am basically an economics major so i did economics and right now i'm making films i'm making stories Uh, so somehow uh, that thing uh, made me think about my child's education and being in mumbai uh, it's very costly uh, education in mumbai is very costly so uh, with all those perspectives i started to explore uh, is there any possibility is there any alternative that is available mm -hmm. because uh, uh, being a bengali i was very much aware of shanti niketan i was very much aware of rabindranath how he was home school so back of my mind mm. the story was there and then mm. i decided ki okay let's connect but at that time i was working full time so the best way to connect was through a social media so naturally the idea came let's uh, start a page or a group on the facebook uh, mm. physically i will connect and i can also connect through the social media so that was the idea uh, of creating this group and from then mm. onwards uh, parents and all the members started uh, getting in touch uh but uh, it was a very dormant group i must say and then in 2019 uh, in the starting when the ssc on the uh, maharashtra government uh, they opened up for the you know home schoolers so there were a lot of uh, discussion in the group ki what is this happening how we can participate how this ssc is going to work what kind of forms we need to fill up and then in 2019 again uh, i connected with many parents and educators <laughs> and then few people Uh, from pune and also from bangalore and also from mumbai they gave mm -hmm. the idea ki uh, can you start documenting these things because you have this skill of uh, making stories uh, videography making films so this can be a good idea so then as a experimentation we started a project uh, by the name project nomad and by that time i was very much clear that you know i need to go through a learning process to give my child something better than what i had and mm. then i started exploring mm. all kinds of uh, alternative education through this project nomad and started making films on them because uh, telling story and uh, bringing up things using story is one of the best way and uh, that is uh, let's try with lily because uh, she is there once again uh, okay great let that's wonderful uh, lily can you hear us that's the most important question of this time yes. so even if we don't have your video if your audio is uh, if you are audible i think uh, people would be that will also do yeah uh, happy to listen to your story if not see you mm. yeah Actually, we have the visuals uh so lily can you hear us any of us uh no oh she's gone again yeah mm. yeah so while we are waiting uh, for lily to come online so has your son ever uh, ever been to any play group or uh, a nursery yes yes. <laughs> yes 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 so uh, uh he has been into a play group uh mm -hmm. for the last few months but we never pushed him for the play group like like mm. go every day to the play group whenever he felt mm. like today i want to go uh mm. he will make some sign i mean yeah i want to go out at that particular time in the morning time so i was aware mm. he yes to go there and play so mm. i said uh, this thing he don't push him for the playground when uh, play group when he wants to go let him go right uh, right and then the pandemic started and everything i mean so right now yeah 
he's back to being at home back yeah to being that is, it's so important you know like even when uh, with all my three children uh, my oldest started actually daycare when he was about one and a half and which was a daycare come play group come activity center and so did my second one and so did my third one the importance for me sending them to an activity center like this was to wean them off from me also because i knew that somewhere they were getting over dependent on me and their agency comes into being when they are not within uh, uh, not around their mom all the time mm. and as they grew older i started teaching in the same school that they went to so uh, that was an added advantage they always had around them uh, and these were all alternate schools even the daycare or the play group that we chose was uh, forward thinking you know where the children had a lot of freedom and so uh, yeah yeah so all of us i guess we make choices depending on our needs and the family circumstances i see lily here hi lily can you hear us shall we try again at 4 yeah uh Mm. I do have another session at four, actually. Yeah, so, yeah. Just one. Yeah, yeah. So if not today, then maybe we can uh, have another chat with Lily sometime during the week or uh, tomorrow. Because tomorrow, yes, is, yes. I'm free the whole day. So maybe I'll just type in and say. okay uh, so on the other side uh, those who are uh, watching and listening us live if you have any question by the time we try to connect with lily uh, you can uh, write them down on the comment section and we can uh, bring it on our you know discussion and we can talk about that Yeah, I don't see any comments coming in as yet. Uh, so maybe we could just continue for a little more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, so tell me, how has it been? How has your journey as a parent been? You, uh, how do you see your child growing and learning? And maybe give us a few examples about how he learns. so uh, uh till now i have been observing him uh, uh very casually not saying you know mm -hmm. i am looking at you all all the time so mm -hmm. he is uh, like uh, learning things from everywhere which is which is uh, for the first time i am i have noticed that because he counts mm -hmm. the number from the clock uh he he is uh, uh learning the colors from the flowers uh, mm -hmm. uh and uh, uh he likes to dance and i have few plants in my in my home and he expects mm -hmm. them to dance with him so mm -hmm. while he is dancing he tries to pull them and please come with me and dance so mm -hmm. i can have an idea that you know they have a vast power of imagination and that is very good uh, lily is there again let us try once again uh, lily can you hear us Uh, Lily, can you hear us? Hi, Lily. No, it got freezed. Yeah. Freezed again. Maybe yeah. you could just uh, maybe we could just tell her to come uh, on her computer, which has a, a LAN cable, and uh, even if she is not visible, her audio would be there, you know, and at least people will hear her. So. Yeah. Let me just give her a call. and talk to her okay okay yeah uh. so meanwhile while saurav is giving a call to lily to check why she isn't uh, 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 
whether we can work out some other solution to this. Uh, uh, you know, Sora was sharing about how his son learns. I have so many examples of how all my three children have been learning. And uh, each one has been a different kind of a learner. While my oldest, you know, was uh, more of an observer and uh, uh, a person who would want to do things over and over again to learn them, um, and but by himself, you know, not forced. In fact, uh, uh, there was when he was in a in. Um, in a school, in a preschool, uh, the first time that we realized that school doesn't work for him was when his teacher asked him to repeatedly write H and was upset with him because his formations of his alphabets were wrong, not the way the school teaches them. And I had a almost two hour meeting with, uh, uh, with the authorities of this of this preschool trying to tell them that you know he knows his alphabets and he writes them in his own way who cares whether the formations are right or wrong as long as what is visible to you is correct and you all know that an h is an h and a p is a p and a nine is a nine he's learned alphabets on his own he learned alphabets on his own i remember those days we had these huge charts which my sister had gifted me uh, gifted him and uh, these charts had numbers alphabets uh, insects animals etc etc lots of things birds and so on and he would sit looking at each alphabet and then there was a time when he would try writing them over and over and over again and he was completely free there was no force so that was how my oldest learned through observing and practicing my second one was always wanted to be told. He always wanted to be given information in a matter of, so he was more of an auditory learner. He, uh, while my older one was more of a visual uh, and a kinesthetic learner, my second one was more of an auditory learner. He had to be told. So whether it was through videos or whether it was through somebody talking to him, he always loved that. Um, he never liked writing, he never liked, uh, but his mind used to work quickly, very quickly. There was, uh, when he was in grade one and his teacher taught him multiplication tables, uh, he was in school then and uh, he came home and he made a notebook and he had written tables from one to hundred on his own because he was fascinated by the concept of mul multiplication. And, you know, I was like, oh, dear, all children all around you hate doing multiplication. And here you are sitting doing multiplication all the time. And now my third one is completely different from the two. She's just six. And my memories of her learning are really fresh because uh, she has I, in fact, I don't even know how she got to know about so many things. Maybe courtesy that she had two older brothers around her all the time. She's also an extrovert, so she knows and uh, is around a lot of people all the time. So she, uh, she loves outdoor play. She loves the sense of independence. She doesn't like being told what to do, what not to do. And today she is um, she's very easy with her uh, with her uh, ways. She can uh, traverse around confidently without being without any fear anywhere. So no children, you know. After seeing my three children, I've realized that no child is the same. Each child is different. And here, sort of again, but Lily is not yet here. Probably she'll be here. No, I, no, no. Uh, I have told her to come uh, using her computer right now. Okay. So let's try. I think she can hear us. Uh, Lily, can you hear her? Uh, Lily, can you hear hear us? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, lovely. Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Uh, yes, perfectly. I'm okay, so great. great. Uh, Congratulations. We are two, 
what we had to. We've been keeping the uh, the audience busy by just rambling her away. But now that we have you, we're so happy. So I'm sure uh, you have a lot of things to share also. <laughs> <laughs> and never a dearth of things to share when you have children, right? Right. Yeah, so we are going to get on with you, Lily. And why don't we start with uh, you telling us a little about yourself and from where you are, how did you come to India, how long have you been here, and uh, then we'll move on toward uh, to your children. Well, I was born in Romania and uh, from German and Ukrainian parents, so I have no nationality. <laughs> I'm a human. <laughs> I came uh, 19 years ago to Calcutta and I married an Indian. My husband is from Delhi and we settle up here. Mm -hmm. We are okay. both social workers and uh, we try to make the world a better place, so to speak. Wow. Whatever way we can. Yes. yes. So, social work, Lily? Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. So, when you say social work, can you tell us a little about the work that you do? Well, in Calcutta, we help run a school for below poverty line children. Mm -hmm. uh, near Calcutta, basically in Mograhat. I don't know if you anybody knows you have to pass Baraipur and then you reach uh, Mongrahat and uh, it has around 180 children from kg to grade 5. okay wow and for how long has the the school been going on the school started in 1998. wow so that's a long time yes it's a long time yeah yeah uh, Lily, could you hold your mic a little closer to your mouth so that, you know, yeah, it's uh, you're more audible. And uh, uh, so, uh, so lovely your work. You run a school and you have three children and you have homeschooled them. Um, so can you, uh, can we now move on to your children and can you tell us a little more about all three of them and uh, why did, how old are they? Why did you decide to homeschool them? Well, we have three boys. Aman, who's going to be 17 in October. Then our middle one, Samir, who's going to be 16 in November. And our youngest, who's going to turn uh, 12 next month. Wow. OK. And, uh, I think. Uh, mainly in Romania, the school system is a little bit similar to West Bengal. Mm -hmm. When I was in school, has mm. been a lot of uh, knowledge, more academic influence on children, and uh, it has pushed many of my colleagues and myself to the point that we could never actually keep up with the academics that the school required. It has mm -hmm. been almost impossible for us to keep up with the homework, with the amount, because uh, during my school age was a communist time, so it has this big push of having more and uh, showing off more as a country how much the students can learn. And all mm -hmm. that has influenced us, you know, uh, I don't know. Maybe 70, 80 percent of what you learn in school, you never remember. Or right. Use. Yeah. And uh, then I met people along the path who had homeschooled their children. And I thought, oh, wow, what a wonderful way to teach your children. Mm -hmm. And uh, That's how I started. <laughs> I wanted to do the same. Okay. Wow. And uh, my husband had felt the same way. Mm -hmm. Homeschool is the best. 
wow that's that's really interesting i wish i had met you that uh, so many years ago because i did go through an entire turmoil and i felt that school was a non negotiable so i kept searching for schools that were more child friendly and uh, went uh, by what the child really wants to do and due to that we kept changing schools also until we reached a point where we decided that uh, unschooling uh, is the best option so i'm so glad to uh, that i at least got get to know you now and um, so tell us tell us a little more about uh, um, how was it when you decided to homeschool them were you tensed or did you feel that oh uh did everything go smoothly um uh, and what about support from your family or uh, your husband's family were they okay with that my family pretty much understood but from my side and from my husband's side they have been mm -hmm. open to this idea okay maybe from my uh, side they have been a little bit skeptic in the beginning Mhm. Mm Thinking how uh, would the kids be socially they will be uh, they will have manners they will uh, be able to perform academic what about their future this one question that they have always asked me. Mhm. Mm uh, after they have met the kids now that they are older I have an aunt who has been an educator all her life <laughs> she has assured my mom that i did the best thing mm -hmm. because uh, my son carry himself with confidence he was able to explain what he's learning and above all he was warm and happy and sociable towards her and that okay I more volume than anything i could have explained mm -hmm. and mm. i often say that at the end you know the kids will speak for themselves you know we cannot answer every single critic and every single person to their satisfaction right but we have to keep on going and uh, of course there is a balance in the way that you know at the end of the day it's not uh, homeschooling or unschooling or normal school like i talked with you previously it's about the commitment we as parents make towards our children mhm mm mhm mm i think that's more important than uh, anything else without commitment even homeschooling can fail <laughs> right right yes yes this balance is so important yes. and uh, you have to okay have a, you have to have a goal and uh, where you're going and teach the kids also to make goals and achieve their goals and celebrate their goals right it's going like a wave <laughs> mhm mm I am not uh, how you say uh, very prepared maybe like other parents feel that they are educator or psychologues or anything I was just a person a mom who wanted to do uh, something that is positive for her children to take them away from the rat rat to rat uh, challenge you know they're always in competition always they have to perform and that might be okay when they are older but when they are young they don't need to know to feel that pressure right just enjoy life and uh, learn uh, at their uh, age level and be healthy and most of the time society focuses a lot on academic i've seen it in mm -hmm. in romania everybody is like let's achieve let's make them all geniuses let's make them memorize and they enroll their children in like 10 20 courses and extra curriculum and the children are tired mm -hmm. they 
are tired and they are unhappy and uh, unsatisfied and they might know a little bit of every single subject but they are not knowing anything at the end they just scratch the surface because they don't have right. the you know they go for drawing class they go for piano class they go for violin they go for uh, soccer they go for this you know keep them busy the society says entertain them and mm. along the way that children also need to develop emotionally you know they don't develop their interpersonal skills without allowing them to develop them you know, right till uh, five six year old children develop those skills by playing mm. Mm. Their children, by making mistakes by being free mm. to explore you know mm. nature their best friends we keep them so right. much safe in the house don't touch the earth don't touch the grass don't touch the sun don't do this you have to be safe and all these sophisticated okay. toys and they learn nothing <laughs> oh. uh, lily there is a message on facebook which is uh, saying your voice is too low so you need to hold your mic closer to your mouth so that okay. uh, yeah, yeah, you're audible. And uh, in fact, since we are talking about the younger children and you're talking about how younger children don't really need to be in under any pressure and uh, they need to feel that sense of freedom and excitement to learn things that they want to. There is a question that a Facebook uh, that's come from Facebook. Uh, which says my three and a half year old generally feels very excited when she is told that she will go to school like other kids. Is it okay to homeschool a child like that? I have never put her to a play group even. So the parent wants to know more about whether, you know, we should homeschool a child who is excited to go to school. That's a difficult question <laughs> <laughs> because uh, it's really up to the parent to decide what True. is best for the child. Mm -hmm. And uh, on one uh, hand, you have to keep into account the desire of a child, but uh, sometimes the desire of a child will be to eat ice cream just before bedtime. <laughs> So you'll have to say no. <laughs> so I think uh, it will be up to the parents. They can explore homeschooling and they can make the decision. But from my point of view, for me, I think for as long as we parents can stay next to our children, can love them, can invest time in them and commit to do that, I think it's better to be homeschooled. If, however, lifestyle in her case is different, work or everything, then maybe school is better. I cannot say. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's known that 80% of the child character is uh, formed before the year of five. And that it's developed only through personal interaction with the parents, so people that they feel safe around, people that love them and want what's their best for them, and they know when they are tired, they know when they are cranky, when they are sick, and they know the reason. They are not put in a group where they have to behave like 20, 30 kids, and it's just mm -hmm. one adult. How would that be? possible to fulfill all their yeah. needs that's true so the emphasis is on being around a person you trust the most and yeah. a child who trust the parent the most and uh, the parent being around the child itself creates the conducive environment for uh, the child's learning and growth 
and that is so so important so even if parents do choose to send their children to school you know you need to remember that as long as you are with the child and you give your child the time that the child requires when the child is at home um and you focus on the connection between you and your child yeah, you know things can go smoothly and your child would still have a very happy child so there's another question that comes uh, could you discuss uh, a little more on how we go about the exam procedure if we are homeschooling our kids so uh, uh, i guess uh, before we go to this question i would like you to answer something that uh, that has often that's a question that's often been asked to me is about how do your how do homeschool children learn to read and write and uh, how do they learn their math and uh, how does all that happen with them they learn like any other child <laughs> <laughs> uh, children have a natural desire to learn we stifle it by overly teaching them or uh, imposing mm -hmm. much on them so mm -hmm. for example out of my three kids i use different uh, phonic programs for all three of them because it didn't work the same method you know mm -hmm. you have to know your child you cannot put them in a box my elder right. son was uh, faster at learning how to read my middle son was uh, a steady worker <laughs> and he wanted to but not as fast as the elder and the younger one just learned <laughs> sometimes i don't even know how <laughs> just knew how to read at the end <laughs> and yeah. uh, you have to follow certain programs you cannot expect that the uh, he will just learn out of uh, nothing that's true but uh, at the same time you cannot uh, cage them into a method you have to see how each child brain works and if they are happy with your method and you have to make mm -hmm. an effort to be happy when you are teaching them to be enjoying mm -hmm. teaching and mm -hmm. enjoy the children achievement and every single step it's important to acknowledge when they learn mm. otherwise they don't enjoy learning it's becoming a chore right yeah yes and like i started uh, earlier because uh, i've seen uh, many of my colleagues using the method of glen doman of flashcards mm. and mm. Uh, and start teaching children how to read as soon as they literally can sit on the potty okay and, wow and it's not something difficult because children mm -hmm. have a photographic memory mm. and uh, they don't need to learn letter by letter they just memorize the word in right the yes so yes. i used to a flash 10 words at a time three times a day you know every potty break was like 5 10 minutes and you flash 10 words for one week and then you change three words and you keep on flashing them and trusting that they will learn mm -hmm. after 2 years old you cannot test your child mm -hmm. you cannot say oh right. tell me or tell me that he might say it to you privately or suddenly you yeah. will see that he can read he but, can read. Yes. yes yeah but you yeah. will never say that's, uh, that's what i see is happening with my daughter who is six we don't uh, we haven't really taught her to read or write as yet however she uh the words that she is, is used to seeing every day every day in and out and you know wherever she goes she plays on her ipad or whatever board games card games that she plays the words that she sees every day she already knows to recognize them she may not know the spelling exactly but she always gives the first and the last letter correct 
and uh, so that was quite surprising for us too because uh, we've never really taught her how to read and write and she's picking it up she knows words through sights uh, uh, through sight through memory and uh, she remembers she remembers so much that she sees it is our duty as parents to expose her to as many words as uh, she requires so even now when we when she wants to type something on her ipad we always spell out the word for her and then when she sees that word in the drop down menu she tells us oh there it is i know which one it is and she clicks on it and gets it. so you know kids are also very very sharp they learn very quickly and that's been my observation with them so wonderful wonderful you've brought out so many important things uh, through this that children learn they have a photography mem memory they just learn by themselves your duty is to expose them to a lot of uh, words and write since they are really small and glen domain cards is something that children can the something that parents can use and there would be many more flash cards they can even parents can even create their own flash cards i guess yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so there's another question uh, yeah you want to add something yeah glen domain also does the mat dots uh, technique he mm -hmm. started initially with uh, children who were brain damaged and he right. has his methods and mm -hmm. uh, they could learn imagine our children how right. much can yes definitely definitely so uh, there is another question that's coming up at what age should i teach my child to write <laughs> depends on the child physical development i would say i think around 6 uh, 7 years old you can start and depending mm -hmm. on the child how uh, he has developed his muscle in the hands i uh, had a bad experience like 4 years ago where my neighbor her daughter was 3 years old and she was going to a montessori school and they have uh, pushed her to learn cursive writing mm -hmm. and both my husband and i were a little bit surprised that a child mm -hmm. that age it's required to learn cursive right and uh, on top of that you know in a week they will learn like two three letters and we said we know that it takes about a week to two weeks to learn one letter per child <laughs> you know you cannot force it and right. uh, it's just the competitiveness in the schools rather than caring for the children mm -hmm. the child you know was so frustrated that she couldn't write she wanted mm -hmm. to but it wasn't uh, yet so instead of uh, focusing uh, on writing i will focus on develop their uh, muscle you know they can play with their fingers they can push uh, little cars they can play with little balls with their fingers they can uh, mix a ball with chole and rajma and divide it that all mm -hmm. prepare them for writing and they yes. can color and instead of cursive maybe the method i thought my kids was printing and from there we develop into cursive later on in grade 3 4 you know mm. are... but initially i wasn't interested for them to spend hours and hours developing their uh, cursive writing right and right. right yes yeah yeah in fact with what you say uh, there's this uh, memory that comes back to me i used to teach a young girl who was around 6 uh, when she came to me for uh, learning uh, so mainly she would come uh, she her mother wanted me me to help her with her homework and so on and this girl had an impeccable handwriting she was very good with her uh, uh, written words 
However, what I realized as days passed was she focused so much on bringing out a neat handwriting that she was missing out on the concepts and understanding the concepts. And uh, that kind of, you know, hit me because uh, I could see this little girl who was so keen on getting her writing right that she was missing out such an essential part of uh, learning, learning the concepts, understanding them. Right. Yes, I experienced that also when I uh, was helping another home. Asking mom. questions, you know, that came to her. Yeah. Yes, yes. And uh, when when my children were learning to write, and uh, fortunately for them, because they went to alternate schools, uh, nobody really insisted on cursive writing. And uh, I just told them, you know, as you s develop your writing skills, you start joining the letters, and uh, it becomes cursive, you don't have to learn it in a different way. And by the time my oldest was around well, he got so he was so fascinated with the fonts and so on. He himself learned how to use certain words in the cursive format. My second one still doesn't. He he doesn't like writing, so he does. He says, "Mama, when we grow up, we are going to be only with laptops and computers. We are not going to have to write anything," which is also true in a way. Uh, but my daughter loves writing, and she tries, and um, she she has a unique writing and getting her uh, letters and uh, numbers they are really huge but they're it's a lot of fun to see her uh, do it because she likes doing it so great great so there is another facebook user who's saying that if uh, children do not take interest in any subject how can we develop that interest uh, commitment <laughs> you i think uh... <laughs> <laughs> like anything else, you know, also our job as parents, teacher, it's a little bit like a coach uh, mm. who's coaching a team of soccer or uh, cricket or anything in the beginning might be a little bit of a work from the child's side. And uh, the child might resent it a little bit, but when he accomplishes something, and the celebration comes, he will learn to love. He will love to hmm. learn. And uh, there is no other way, I think, besides trying <laughs> again and again and see. Uh, my elder uh, son was always interested in books. So it hasn't been a difficult uh, chore. But my younger son, although he loves books, in the beginning I had to sing the stories to him <laughs> in order for mm -hmm. him to enjoy it. So you have to be creative in some ways and uh, not think that right. you don't have a voice or you are not a good teacher, but think about the child, make your child your focus and priority and he will learn and he will love to learn and uh, if you reward his learning and any accomplishment it doesn't matter that it's big or small but if he sees joy in your eyes and appreciation for the fact that he's learning he will love to learn children mm -hmm. want to make their parents happy at least till they are 10 years old 12 years old children <laughs> are still mm -hmm. ours <laughs> yeah. They yeah. want to please us. It's not that children don't want to please us. They want. They love us. True, true. Yeah. That's so important that, you know, you, uh, uh, one is you celebrate when children learn and uh, uh, you put in your 100% in the concepts that you want to teach them. So uh, it's so, uh, it's so crucial that, you know, as a parent, you need to enjoy what you teaching your child. If you are not enjoying, be assured that your child is also not going to enjoy it. So, and I, it takes, 
it once again takes me back to my teaching days when i used to um, to get all my children to uh, you know get interested in something i would often have to use multiple uh, uh, ways of learning so teaching a, pr- a particular concept so there would be songs there would be drawing there would be movement there would be dance there would be reading there would be enactment and theater so there had to be multiple of things that i had to do in order to you know make the learning experience enjoyable for the children uh, and so is it with my children though we follow unschooling as a method we of we generally go by what the child wants to learn than what we want to teach them which has also been uh, very different but i've in that uh, what the child is interested in to keep up with the interest is also very challenging and that's where uh, the parent has to has to give in a lot to ensure that the interest stays intact by being involved in what the child wants to learn so that's uh, that's been yes i want to yes. add that my elder son uh, had uh, attention deficit so he was very difficult mm. to be taught you know he will have uh, just few moments where he will uh, focus and i could teach him and then he will just disappear into his own world <laughs> so first i had to learn about diet about exercise mm. about uh, pushing when he was there with me and he wanted to learn and uh, mm. for that reason i was also very happy with the homeschooling because otherwise he would have been put on medicine just to be calm in the classroom not to get up and things like that and uh, now i lost my idea but generally i think <laughs> and the homeschooling all the we make certain plans with the children that this is the goal that we want to finish in a year this is the goal that we want to finish in a month and so on and every day for my family that's how it works i also have mm-hmm. to be open to their moods sometimes they want to talk about what they're learning and they engage mm-hmm. each other in a discussion especially now that they are older and they uh, research just the other day one of my son uh, had to watch on the microscope uh, some algae from the from the fields and when they put it in the microscope they saw some worms walking around that they were not visible with a simple eye and uh, my middle son says see that's why you have to wash your hands so well <laughs> before you eat you <laughs> never know what you put in your mouth <laughs> so i start laughing because i was thinking yeah. that's what i've been telling you for so many years <laughs> but they have <laughs> so convicted by the fact that they have seen those worms moving <laughs> and that they are yeah. not visible to the eye so mm. things like that uh, you know they learn much better when they discover it themselves and sometimes you have to also inspire them to think that the idea comes from them that they want to learn and that's a difficult balance yes. otherwise yeah. most of yes. the kids want to watch tv to do their own thing and not always uh, focusing on what it's right so you have to a little bit guide them yeah. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's such a beautiful example that you gave Lily that you know you see something under the micro- microscope or you see something actually happening with your eyes and then you believe it. So experiential learning is so crucial well, for children especially because they I guess uh for everybody we learn through all our sense organs and uh, uh, to be able to grasp in stimuli rather than just words that this is right or this is wrong or you have to do this otherwise this will happen it doesn't 
them because they have not experienced it when it when they experience it they realize oh yes now i understand why you said at this why you told me to wash my hands because there are so many germs that we cannot see and i actually saw them under the microscope so that's so crucial it's such a crucial point that you have made here and uh, we'll go to the next question that is coming up which is about uh, homeschool children can homeschool children give olympiad exams so so before we take this question lily let's look at uh, the first there was another question that had come up what about exam procedures if we are homeschooling our children so we'll take that and then and the question on olympiads together okay i can only speak for myself uh mm -hmm. I always encourage parents who want to homeschool or unschool to research the laws for themselves. For my kids, the homeschool curriculum that I took, uh, it does test them every year. And uh, at least it's encouraged to take a test every year and uh, mandatory for grade eight, 10 and 12. Mm -hmm. uh, was planning to have my elder son with the NIOS this year, but everything got changed due to the COVID. So I don't know when he's gonna give the exam and how. I'll see mm -hmm. how things are changing. And that's about all I know. <laughs> okay. Yes. So that's a very important point, Lily, that every child, every parent should do their own research and see what is best for their children and decide. And yeah. for you, your son was going to give his NIOS. However, the COVID situation came up and right now you're not very sure about uh, when he would give it in future. Yeah. And uh, you did follow a curriculum. Uh, could you tell us the name of the curriculum that you followed for your children? Yes, it's called Christian Light Education. Okay. It's uh, easy for me to follow because it has uh, the workbooks, it has the textbooks, and it has the teacher books. So okay. If, even if I'm not ready to teach something, the teacher books will help me. And <laughs> on the other hand, I wasn't uh, necessary for me to be a teacher in the model that we all know in the school that I sit in the front and I take a lesson and I explain to the kids that was not necessary with my kids. Till grade five, I was more involved in day-to-day -day, uh, learning. But after that, they kind of, uh, the lessons are so easy explained and so, uh, they read it by themselves that they're doing it by themselves and they mm -hmm. don't require my help that much at this level mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. what else can i say my younger my elder son wants to do computer and that's what he took for his electives he's uh, learning computer repairs and uh, hardware not software <laughs> all about uh, assembling on computer and how everything works mm -hmm. he showed interest since he was 12 year old mm -hmm. and my yeah. little son was the most visible about his life since he was a baby he used to love flowers he used to pick flowers and come home and pick insects and uh enjoy them that now he wants to be uh, study horticulture and agroscience and that's all in his mind plants and uh, flowers and uh, gardens and how to save uh, insects and bugs mm -hmm. sometimes my house it's full of uh, caterpillars <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my house is filled with slugs and uh, snails right now. <laughs> so, and, uh, 
another time my younger son came with a whole uh, handful of uh, earthworms because he wanted mm -hmm. to save them from the rain. <laughs> <laughs> it was so shocking for me that I said, please go, take them back. They're enjoying the earth. <laughs> they don't need yes. to be safe. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. So you have the to fact. watch for those things as well. See, uh, when a normal child go to a normal school, parents don't question the other parents as much as they question us in uh, some degrees. You know, everybody expects that because they are homeschooled, they will become some kind of Einstein or uh, they will be I, super <laughs> wonder children. <laughs> but the children will be children and we cannot expect them to be geniuses. We have to see what it's their uh, desire to learn and what they want. And I think... Mm. Uh, if you look even at Germany's system of education, if you look at Finland's system of education, you can see that every job that is done out of passion is done with quality. Mm. You know, that's why Germany has all these quality jobs. They are, have good electricians, they have good mechanics, because they do not... They train people, and I think that even this new law that was given for the education, that's what is going to bring more quality in every area. Mm. Mm. I, in many ways, that's how I see it. Yeah. And it brings dignity into children's life, you know, and so many children who feel lost because they are not geniuses and they cannot go to university and they cannot have this degree or that degree. Uh, it will just bring that self-respect. Right. I think in that way, even homeschooling is like, in, you know, why would I push my child to become a doctor or an engineer if he doesn't enjoy it? Hmm. Would I want him to struggle just because I feel uh, at ease that he has a degree? <laughs> but, uh, and plus, you know, if you look at the schools these days, so much peer pressure, so many drugs are in the schools, so many instances where people, uh, students commit suicide. Would I want my children to be exposed to that uh, environment where they are not good enough if they don't wear, I don't know what kind of clothes or uh, suddenly the outfits are more important than they are. Right. So all these things, I think we forget when we don't look overall at their development we're looking only academic wise and mm -hmm. another uh, skill that i achieved with my kids i think uh, we have to explain to the children you know we have to talk to them and uh, they have question on their mind and if we keep on explaining and keep on talking to them and not take it for granted that they know something because for us it's easy and we comprehend it we are so much older than they are and we have so much more experience of life but they yeah. don't so they need their question answers because they don't really understand so they, you have to be there and have to answer those questions and not take it for granted that they understand just because uh, I think last time you said you asked your son to go with his grandmother for a walk. <laughs> mm. Right? And yeah. that's the right thing to do. So he's supposed to go, but you also had to learn his emotions and why he, it's not a good time for him to go or what he's facing as a child. Mm. It's the same for every mm. single child. Right. And if they feel that you respect them, if they feel that you love them and you want what's best for them, sometimes when there is an emergency, they will just trust you because they know you don't want what's bad for them and they will do it. 
But if right. you push them and push them and push them, then they will withdraw. They will not ask you yeah. questions anymore. They will not talk to you anymore. They will hide their feelings from you. Yes. And they will talk with somebody who's equal their age, who doesn't have experience of life. Right. And they have to talk. And what an advice would another blind person give to a blind? You know, mm. you cannot have that. So all these things, I think, they are very important. I think that parenting is more important than academic-wise. Yes. Yeah. If you look at their character and you guide them in that way and uh, you teach them those things, I think academic will follow. Because if you teach them self-respect, if you teach them discipline, if they teach them a commitment and love, then the rest will follow. They will fall by themselves. Mm. And uh, of course, you'll have to talk to them again and again and again. <laughs> yeah. And uh, as they grow up, you'll uh, realize that they are their own person. They are not anymore children. Sorry, I think I take too much time. But as they grow older, you realize they are an individual. Yes. You, know? so you have to let them express themselves. You have to let them do things in their own way so they can uh, discover themselves as well. Yes, that's so true. That's so true, which is why I always say, you know, the connection that the parent has with her child is so important. And we do, we all do falter, but do we really learn from wherever we have made mistakes and go ahead? So uh, keep moving on. And once your child sees that you are moving on and you're looking at the positives, then slowly they also learn to do the same. And they learn, they learn so much about respect, about uh, understanding one's own emotions by just simply observing you as a parent because you are their entire life. So these are such, such, uh, uh, pearls of wisdom, you know, that we have got to hear from you, uh, Lily. We have overshot the time by about seven minutes. Uh, so what we could do now is we'll just take one or two questions and then we will call it closing. There is one question that seems to be uh, quite interesting to me. Um, uh, this user, uh, this Facebook member asks us, what is best? Homeschooling or unschooling. So there, this person is between, uh, uh, you know, listening to uh, interaction between an unschooling parent and a homeschooling parent, and is asking this question: What is best, homeschooling or unschooling? So, what would you have to say about it, uh, Lily? I can. Uh, can you? Uh, your I'm thinking <laughs> I <don't know> what <laughs> to say. <laughs> I, I'll go with my side. I think homeschool is better if you uh, <laughs> and, uh, to a certain degree we get unschooled. You know, like I had to learn that teaching doesn't mean me being in front of the kids trying to become a teacher and teach them like this and impose certain things but enjoy their learning mm -hmm. so that's unschooling for me right i think it's whatever you feel comfortable as a parent if you feel uncomfortable to go into unknown totally go for homeschooling and have a little bit of curriculum so you feel safe so to speak you know you don't right. have to and mm -hmm. uh, small steps and then you'll see how it goes and yeah. see how the child progresses. I, it's difficult to say. Mm. Besides that, uh, have some goals. <laughs> have some <laughs> goals to teach your child. Don't uh, allow him to be without goals because that's not yeah. the goal of the homeschool or the unschool or just to have the kids be wild they we still have that for them I think. <laughs> and uh, 
and uh, think in your mind what's your uh, reason for homeschooling and unschooling for me i think safety issue has been and uh, peer pressure which doesn't create sociable life and uh, developing a personal relationship with my children getting to know them discovering that although they are uh, my kids they are still three different characters they are individual they are unique mm. and you have to treat them in a different manner and you have to learn that with each child and, yes uh, i think yeah. those are the only thing and your love you have to define what love is <laughs> caring protecting teaching you know mm -hmm. there's so much more into homeschool yes. or that you can offer mm -hmm. yes i always whenever uh, anybody asks me whether they should homeschool or unschool i say do what what you feel you are comfortable with even yeah. we the family evolved into unschooling and uh, we we tried different things and we checked whether we were comfortable with it or not and then and right now my children are uh, my boys are older one is 12 one is 15 in and uh, they very clearly know what they want to do so um, so unschooling works best for us then and by the time your third you have a third one and my third one came in pretty late she's uh, uh, around nine years younger than the oldest and six and a half seven years younger than the second one so you you do become a lot more carefree because you have seen your children learn on their own many things on their own so you tend to start believing that you know things are going to work for them for the youngest and they are going to in fact i i really don't know how my youngest has learned so many things without me teaching her or me without me feeling the need to teach her we do a lot of things together in our mama daughter time where uh, we do things that we both enjoy doing and that's about it apart from that she she's a self learner she learns a lot and she loves to be at par with uh, school going children too so she keeps herself abreast with whatever her school going friends are doing and learns it on her own too so for me hey, unschooling works the best as a family however if uh, you know there was a friend of mine who had shared some time ago that but i love doing this with my child and i love uh, doing these activities with my child i said but who says you you don't have to you know you have to do things that you love and your child will will love it too because uh, they will see the love coming out from it and their interest will automatically come in when they see that you are completely immersed in what you want to do with them so it's not about what is uh, best there is no comparison it is about what suits you as a family and i stay put with that there is uh, it's it's really something that uh, your family should be okay with and happy about which is why i also say that if your family feels you need to send your child to school you do send your child to school but the connection that you have with your child should not uh, deteriorate just because the child is going to school the trust the respect the love there should still be impact intact you know and uh, then it doesn't matter whether the child is being homeschooled unschooled or schooled the your it is your relationship with your child that uh, helps the child live a happy life a happy childhood and then a happy adulthood so um one last uh, okay uh, there are facebook users who are uh, uh, who want you to give the name of the curriculum once again because they couldn't hear it properly so what i'm going to uh, suggest to all the facebook users is i'm going to ask lily to type it uh, down maybe if she can't access the comments right now she can do it once this session is over she'll type down the name of the curriculum she used and the other uh, name that she used uh, predominantly was glendomin 
then she could even send you a link a few links about uh, where you could find material that glen dorman has been using and um, are there any last words that you would like to share lily with everybody i hope it was a help for everybody i totally enjoyed <laughs> chatting with you sharmila yes i did so, so too that we can talk about <laughs> yes i did, i did so too i was so looking forward to this and now i'm pretty sure that i want to visit calcutta one sometime soon and i want to come visit Please you and your come. family and we do know a few other unschoolers or and homeschoolers in calcutta too so it would uh, i'm really looking forward to uh, meeting you some day and it was lovely talking to you i do hope i do hope uh, i'm sure in fact uh, uh, many 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 homeschoolers are going to benefit from this discussion though people couldn't see your face and maybe next time we should do another live with you where you know your video as well as audio is good uh, uh, so thank you so much lily and uh, i will end the session by saying that lily is here she is an admin of the group of this homeschooling india group so you can reach out to her any time and she is more than willing to help and support our uh, homeschoolers who are interested and who reach out to her so do keep that in mind and uh, and a happy saturday evening to everybody and we sign off at that note um bye lily see you soon bye, and bye everybody